Hello everyone and welcome to Jumperman Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY and today we have a service call for a large package unit. Thank you to everyone tuning into Jumperman Tech. Today we have a service call on a large package unit. I believe this is a York unit. It does air conditioning and heating. We have a furnace in here. This controls the hallways for a 10-story building. And we got a service call that it is super hot in the hallways and we're not cooling. All right. Got two compressors. Got three contactors. Compressors not running. I hear something running. That must be the indoor fan. Got some LEDs on that board. I'm not sure exactly what that's for. Here's our thermostat. One of the guys, we're working, actually working on one of the LG units here. We actually just changed another compressor. It's unbelievable. And while we we're here, we had one of the engineers come up and say that the hallway was hot. He lowered the thermostat. It's been about 15 minutes, not working. So he asked us to check it out. So it says 73, I'm guessing that's the indoor sensor. And it is set to 68. And it says cool. It just keeps blinking, huh? Wonder what that's about. All right, so one thing I noticed just now you guys can see the gap on that thermostat it's not pushed in right all right this is a little dangerous to do with the power on let's let's turn it off let's turn this thing off we're going to turn off the disconnect and see if we can adjust that now let's see if we can hook this thing in All right, that's definitely better. I think that's in. Really? Yeah. Let's turn that back on. Maybe that's why the snowflake kept blinking. Possibly. Maybe, maybe, you know, the, the, the call isn't happening because it wasn't contacting enough. What's this? Let's go to mode, cool. Now let's drop it. Still gonna be a little time frame, right? Could be a timer on there. Yeah. The on. yeah. The indoor fan came on, evaporator. And we got a blinking on there. And let's see. Let's see what happens. I see a green light blinking at some point up there that wasn't blinking before. Let's give it a few minutes. You hear that? That's the sound of money, guys. <laughs> All right. So we got this compressor running right now. So the first stage kicked on. That's a beautiful thing. <laughs> All right. Let's keep an eye on this thing. Let's take a look at everything. All right, two out of the four condenser fan motors are running. And it makes sense because this is the first stage. One compressor came on, so two of these came on. I guess if the other compressor comes on, right, all of these should be spinning, but that's looking good. Look at these filters. This thing is plugged. Plugged. Woo! Need some maintenance. Feeling the suction line right now. This thing is frozen. Not frozen, it's just really cold. It's really good. I get a light in here, but look at this coil. That thing is messed up. Just picked up a box of filters and we're replacing them. All right, guys, so the filters are good to go. One thing I wanted to check out was to see if these contactors are pitted because I know this is a very old unit. So if you take off the little covers, 
it's important to look inside. If you look behind the contact, it's extremely pitted. I'm gonna leave a, uh, a photo there so you guys can see it clear. But that is extremely bad. You don't have a good contact. You can run on high amps and pretty much you're shortening the life of that compressor. We just picked up a couple contactors while we picked up the filters. Give this thing a bit of a tune up. Man, this is gonna look great in here. Covers, everything's missing. But yeah, those are seriously pitted contacts. You don't wanna damage these compressors over, you know, not taking care of your units. And just doing the little tune-ups that you need to do. I mean, just look how much dust is in there. I'll take some pictures, but all that stuff, it's no good. So let's clean this up and let's replace this. All right, guys, let's just clear up some of this because I cannot see well. Everything is in my way. I want to make sure we can do this as easy as possible. Just want to be able to freely work. If you don't remember what's going on, take a picture. You can use colored tape or wire markers. These are numbered from A to Z, or it's not, I mean, lettered from A to Z or numbered from zero to 15. That definitely helps. But for the most part, this is already color coded. I took some pictures and we're just gonna go one by one. So let's go ahead and get started. A lot of wires here. All right, guys, getting started. gonna go pretty much one for one sometimes you got to evaluate the situation based on how many wires you have and, and space I'm gonna start with the bottom and go one for one so like that All right make sure the coil is up to match the other one and we're just gonna go in and go to the same space I'm just gonna go one for one Let's do this for the first three on the bottom, right? Just follow along. We got those three. Let's take that out. So where that goes, see that's real tight. Let's get that in place. Yeah, you see that's that's real tight. That's in. Then we got two on the first pole. Let's bring that down. These things are real rusted up. Okay. That's in the way now. Let's see, this is not gonna be the permanent face. You see, I can't get this in there properly. It's from, what we could do for right now is just put this in its place. We can make it neater after, but I'm gonna put it so we don't lose where it goes. I don't like taking out the, all the wires and then you're lost unless you mark them all. And you know exactly what you need to do if you need to write it down write it down so now I freed this up I can take this out take out the screws put it to the side and mount this one in and just go wire for wire again and of course guys don't forget to turn the power off this is gonna be the last contact that you change <laughs> if you know what I mean all right all right there Let's see, can we get this out the way? You see, everything is so tight. Can we get the other one out the way? Nope. Everything, everything is real tight. No, no, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to do this properly. You see, now we're gonna have another, we have to do this another way. We have to disconnect it. It's gonna be as simple as that. I think these are the short wires, your line voltage. If I disconnect these three, I should have a lot more slack up here. All right, let's take this line out, this line, this line. And hopefully we have a little more slack now. Take 
that out. Yeah. Oh, that, that's, now we can follow my plan a bit more, even though it's still tight. Right there, leave it just like that. Now what I can do, everything's holding me out. Everything's holding me out here. Right, hold up. We know where this goes. Tell you, sometimes this stuff gets tricky. That goes on leg one. Let's put this in place. Okay, that's gonna work. Now we can have the new one mounted. Got it mounted. Put this back. Now put that back. And now we can start dissecting this. Half of it is now done. The bottom half, our load side is now done. Now let's do our line voltage side and coil. All right, we got those. These two are the coil, A1 and A2. So I'm just gonna go one by one. Okay. One side of the coil is in. Now let's do this. Okay. Now I can neatly get that in. The other side of the coil. Okay. Now two more wires to go. Line and the last one. Really bad. These things are getting a little changing this colors, a little bit of rust. But it's all good. Still works, but you don't want that thing to fail. It's better to tune this up so you don't so when it's 98 degrees outside, it's not 200 degrees in that hallway. So one done and we're gonna repeat the process for the next few. All right, now that is a beautiful thing. All right guys, close this all up, put this panel back. I took this out because everything was so tight. It really made things a lot easier and it looks a lot cleaner here. Looks like we're good to go. Let's turn this thing on. Let's let that thermostat Let's say 28, like 66. Oh, that's the temperature. That thing must be off. I don't know why it says that 71. Let's go to mode, cool. Let's bring it down to 68. Let's see what happens. Right there, that contactor pulled in. We know that's good. So that one is our definitely our evaporator fan motor. If you guys can hear it. We took a look inside over here, the belt, a little wobbly, but it, it's okay, no biggie. And any minute now, our compressor should start. All right, guys, she's running. One thing I just noticed, that looks like this is a 410A system. Yeah, 410A, two circuits. Look at that back pressure. This is low. I don't always add gauges onto a system because every time you add gauges, you lose a little bit of a refrigerant. The reason that I did that is because when I checked the temperature, once we got it running, look at that, 39 degrees, way too cold. Way, way, way too cold. So we know something is definitely up there with that kind of pressure, that evaporator coil is gonna freeze. And at some point, uh, you know, the low pressure control is probably gonna shut it down. And we only got one circuit running over there. So, another thing that gave this away, it said on August 31st, 2015, they added two pounds of refrigerant to C2. 
it's got to be compressor one two and that's the one i got the gauges on right now look at that thing 410a super low pressure all right guys we're gonna wrap this one up here unfortunately even though we found the problem and did the tune up this unit has other issues this is a very old machine and if they added two pounds of refrigerant in 2015 it's 2023 now there has been a known leak here for at a minimum of eight years that nobody found so we'll see if the building approves us to do the leak search because most likely we will find it and we're gonna get that job done but it is what it is we're gonna wrap this one up here if anyone found this video interesting or helpful please drop a like comment and subscribe as i come out with new videos every week and i'll catch you all next time